Okay, in this video, I'm going to show I'm going to show a proof that the number the square root of two is irrational, and I'm also going to talk about how that relates to a story of murder, which is today I'm I'm publishing this today on Halloween, so it seems like an appropriate day to talk about a story of murder and intrigue. So first off, if you're just interested in the proof, let's do the proof. Um, if you're not in you know interested in the story of murder, well then I'm shocked. So a lot of you know that I like mathematics, clearly, but I also like the history and the people surrounding it. That's a lot of what kept me interested and still keeps me interested into it to this day. But Okay, let's first off, let's show, we're going to show that this number, the square root of 2, is irrational. And we're going to do this by using the proof technique. We're going to use proof by contradiction. So we're going to assume something to be true, and eventually we're going to show that that, in fact, can't be true. So we're going to show the square root of 2 is irrational by using proof by contradiction. So, okay, so here's our proof. So we're going to start off by, let's assume, let's assume that the square root of 2 is rational. So what does it mean for a number to be rational? Well, it means we can write our number as a ratio of integers. So we can write the square root of 2 as a ratio of two integers. We can write it as a fraction, where b and a are whole numbers, is the idea. So the square root of 2 equals uh, b divided by a, where b and a are integers. And we can also assume... Let's assume that uh, b and a have no common factors. Because we can always just reduce it. Okay. So let's assume we've, uh, we've, we've, we've got a fraction. This is in reduced form. So b and a have no common factors. This is going to be the statement that we contradict. Okay. So we're assuming they're integers, uh, b and a. We can write... Square root of 2 as a, as a fraction, b and a are integers. These have no common factors. This is ultimately what we're going to contradict. Okay, so the square root of 2 equals b over a. Well, we can just square both sides. That's totally legal. So if we do that on the left side, the square root of 2 squared is just 2. On the right side, well, we would have b squared over a squared. And I can multiply both sides by a squared. So that would give me 2a squared equals b squared. So this statement right here, the fact that 2a squared equals b squared, it says, it says, well, that b squared is equal to 2 times some number, right? Because a squared is just some number. So it says b squared is equal to 2 times some number. Well, if b squared is equal to 2 times some number, that tells us that, well, b squared is even. Okay, so if b squared is equal to 2 times some number, that means b squared is even. And from that, what can we conclude? So if b squared is even, what can we conclude about the number b? Well, if b squared is even, b is also even. Right? I mean, think about it. You know, if you, if you take odd numbers and square them, 5 squared, well, that's going to be 25. 7 squared, that's going to be 49. If we take an odd number and square it, an odd number and square it, we still get an odd number. If you take an even number and square it, so I'm just taking random numbers here. If you take an even number and square it, you still get an even number. So if b squared is even, the original number we started with b is also even. So this is important. So b squared is even, b is also even. So, well then, since b is even, that means we can write b as 2 times some number c. So I'm not going to write it, but, you know, a and b's were integers. c is also going to be an integer. So b is equal to 2 times a number. Okay, so we've got this important restriction, or not restriction, but observation. So b is even. So b equals 2 times c. Let's go back to our, our equation that we had a second ago. We had that 2a squared equals b squared. 
Let's substitute in that value for b. So we've got 2a squared on the left. We know that b is equal to 2 times c. So we had b squared on the right, so I would have 2c squared on the right. Well, we can simplify this. We have 2a squared. On the right side, we'd have 2 squared, which would be 4c squared. So we have 2a squared equals 4c squared. Let's just divide both sides by 2. Divide both sides by 2. So now we have that a squared equals, well, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So a squared equals 2 times c squared. But again, this says that a squared is even. By the same logic as before, since a squared equals 2 times some number, well, a squared is even. So, dun dun dun, that means a is also even. Okay, so what have we got here? Well, we've got that a is even, b is also even. But now this is our contradiction. This contradicts our early state, our earlier statement. We said that a and b have no common factors. That was our assumption that they were reduced. But now, since a and b are both even, well, they do have a common factor. They have a common factor of two. So this contradicts our assumption. This contradicts our assumption that a and b have no common factors. So that means our original assumption cannot be correct. Our original assumption that the square of 2 is rational cannot be correct. So it must be the fact, it must be the case that in fact the square root of 2 is irrational. And proof complete. We've now got that the square root of 2 is irrational. So I know you're saying, Patrick, what does that have to do with murder? Well, what this has to do with murder. So you may have heard, you know, I'm sure most of you have heard of Pythagoras and the Pythagorean theorem, you know, of the Pythagorean theorem fame. So Pythagoras. There was actually a group uh, in, in Greece known as the Pythagoreans. Dun, dun, dun. And they were of the belief that everything had to do with numbers. And somehow, you know, again, so read into this a little bit more if you want to. But they almost hold, held numbers as, as, as just, you know, in this mystic, almost religious sense. And, and they thought that everything had to do with numbers. And for them, the idea that any number, so up till then, they had assumed the Pythagoreans, they thought... They thought that all numbers are rational. And for them, that was a sense of beauty. You know, what would make, you know, what, what could be more beautiful than, than having any number being able to be expressed as a ratio of two integers? You know, how nice and tidy. Well, along comes along uh, Hippasus, and he was actually a, a, one of the Pythagoreans. So Hippasus actually was the one, okay, so now let's get into uh, some, some more history. There's definitely some great debate about whether this story's true or not. It's definitely a very famous story, and I've heard a lot of different ones, but Hippasus was the one, you know, was, who was given credit. Hippasus showed that the square root of 2 is irrational. He showed that it is irrational, and for the, the Pythagoreans, they thought this was like blasphemy, and they didn't want the secret to get out, and it upset them. So what did they do? So what did the Pythagoreans do? According to one story, they drowned poor old Hippasus for revealing this knowledge. So according to some stories, Hippasus came up with this proof that blew the mind of the Pythagoreans and they drowned Hippasus. So, a story of murder and intrigue. According to another story, apparently Hippasus was, was killed for constructing a dodecahedron inside a sphere. So, uh, can you imagine that? So, did a math proof get Hippasus killed? Again, there's some debate. It's a very famous story. Go check it out if you have any interests, because uh, I think it's fascinating, and you'll pick up some other interesting tidbits along the lines. So, all right, there's your proof, proof by contradiction, a little, a little lesson in Greek history. Again, may or, not, 
may or may not be true, but I think it's fascinating nonetheless. So, all right. I hope you found this interesting as well, and have a great day out there. Bye.